In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, and we come to your word, which is truth and life to those who find it. We ask you to bless your word today unto each heart, that when we need it most, you would bring it to life, not only for ourselves, but for others. For we ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we get into the word, I wanted to announce publicly that I am scheduled to have a procedure done in my body, <clears throat> which is gone through the medical profession. <laughs> I'm not changing sexes or anything like that. I just want you to know. But in all honesty, I may be out for a week or two or three. I'm not sure. Uh, so starting uh, the Sunday, I think it's the 21st, possibly, or the, it's after the, 16th of February. Um, I'm going to have uh, a replacement to carry on the services, which is going to be Joe Wise, a dear friend of mine. I've known him for years. I served with him in church under him as his assistant, and I know that you'll be in good hands. Um, he has lots of knowledge, and this will be during my recovery. So this will happen after the 16th of February. And I just wanted uh, everyone to keep me in prayer. I've been praying for a miracle that I don't have to go to the hospital, but I know that God uses doctors to bring healing as well. And um, both of those things are in God's hands. So he knows I believe. He's healed me before. And um, I solicit your prayers during this time. And for the church, I, I pray that the support of the church is important. So please come looking for Jesus because that's who we all come to look for anyway. It's not me and it's not Joe, it's Jesus. Okay? So today we're going to be reading from the epistle of James, the third chapter, beginning with verse one. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity, so is the tongue among many of our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. But the tongue can no, dropping down to verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we the men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not so to be, that the fountain sent forth at the same place, place sweet water and bitter. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Now, I also want to read in Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. In his scripture, we read about the tongue and the power of the tongue, our words. I think we've all experienced times where words have severely hurt us. I think we visualized and seen how words can tear down situations, whether they're good or bad. I think we've experienced times when words have built people up, have helped deliver people from situations, have changed the courses of lives because of words, both good and bad. But there's an aspect to the tongue that we must all identify with that's important. I know that many of us had parents or relatives that said to us, if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say it. And it's not an easy thing to control the tongue. I'm sure that many of us, like myself, if you stub your toe or you catch your finger in the door, something comes out of your mouth that isn't very pleasant and it's a reaction that is automatic. Or someone screws you over and it's just, you. it's almost like a release. It just comes out. And what we're heading with today is there's a source to what we say. The word teaches us in Matthew 12, it's out of the abundance of your heart that your mouth speaks. We know according to God's word is, is we don't all, we don't have to know a lot about you. We just have to listen to you talk. And you may be talking about the weather, but in that conversation, we hear a lot of things, especially if you have any type of discernment in your life. You may hear sorrow or you may hear joy. And getting back to the heart, if we could look inside your heart, it's like a garden that has a fence around it. And what's in that garden today? Is there faith in the garden? Or look at it as a room and there's pictures on your wall. What's the pictures that are on the wall of your garden, of your heart? Is there fear? Is there a big plaster thing of fear that you're worried about everything? And all that fear is motivating what's coming out of your mouth and directing your life. Well, you're upset about everything and everybody. Nobody can say anything without you flying off the handle. Is there peace? That no matter how the earth quakes, and I'm talking, and I'm referring to a peace in God. Is he with you in that heart? It makes a big difference in our lives. What is plastered on the walls of our hearts? Because that's going to dictate what comes out of your mouth. And oh, we may be able to hold our tongue, but it's already resolved. Yes, the battleground is the mind. And we have this conversation that goes on as to what I'm going to believe. What I think about myself. What I think about my neighbor. What I think about God. What I think about the enemy of my soul. What God is saying to me, whether I'll believe him or not, obey him or not. That's the battleground, but we make a decision, and when that decision is made about, when I make a decision about you, or you make a decision about me, oh, he's preaching too hard, he's preaching too light, I don't like his preaching, I do like his, whatever. It goes down in your heart. And then what ends up down in our heart directs our lives as to how we treat one another, as to how we treat our Lord Jesus Christ. It comes out in our actions. For example, you might say you love me because there's that aspect too. There's, there's lying and cheating and stealing. You might look me in the face and say, 
you're a great man or a good man or a bad man or whatever. But as soon as I turn my back, there's the gossip. And that's out there. People will say things to our face that they love you, but their actions speak a different result. So what I do with this conundrum, if you would, this difficulty of sorting out what's going on in my life, it's a matter of examining our hearts. The word says not to judge one another, but to look at ourselves in light of God's Holy Spirit. And I believe today in the body of Christ, that's one of the most difficult things or one of the things that are escaping the world today. Is there, we are, the world is losing the aspect of truth. Because do we not all search for truth? And what is truth? And that conviction of God's spirit as to what is good and what is bad, that is also being brought on the table as to what is good and what is bad. And in relation to God's word, there's this confusion out there. Oh, it's okay to have premarital sex. No, it's okay to live with one another. That's an acceptable term. It's against God's word, the truth. And these are the things that we face each and every day when we are sorting out our lives as we, as this battle of light and darkness takes place and we make choices. It all comes back to the choice of what we love, who we love. And looking inside. For example, we've been hurt. Did we? Is that hurt still plastered on our wall? And is it still affecting our relationship with that person who hurt us? Is there unforgiveness plastered on our heart to where when we see that person, we still have bitterness? And it's a bondage. It's a chain and ball where it steals our joy, it robs our peace, it separates us from him. And here comes all the things flying out of our mouth about it as we're walking through our house and we're complaining about this. And Or do we spend time before the Lord in the light of his Holy Spirit and allow him to root these things out of our garden? To change that plaque on the wall that says hate and put replace it with love or peace and let the Holy Spirit do his work as we respond to the Holy Spirit's will in our lives. And now that person that hurt us, that person that gossiped about us, these things that seem like they aren't going in the right direction that want to bring us doubt and fear or uncertainty, suddenly change. Why? Why well, I don't have uncertainty on my heart anymore. Why? Because I have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the price to allow him to move that picture off my wall and replace it with confidence and faith in him that he has my tomorrow, he has my children, he has my job, he has my health. And the enemy's there trying to put another pla different plaque up on the wall as don't believe that. Because who are you? You come from Arlington or you come from Whitehall and you don't deserve, and that's bullshit. Or who do you think you are anyways? And that's the battle. And we have a choice. You can try to control your tongue as much as you want, but if we never deal with the heart, God help you. Because what's laying in here, there are layers. Some of us never have taken the time to unravel, to unlayer it. Like you're peeling an onion. You start off with bitterness. You start off, then the next layer is unforgiveness. 
Then you go down to jealousy. Then you go into hatred. Now you're in the murder. Do you know you can murder someone with your tongue? You can murder their reputation. And here comes God's Holy Spirit on Mike. Oh, here we go. Mike, you didn't realize how much lust you have in your life. It's in the wrong spot. Or how much pride you have. Or how you want to be in the center of attention, Mike. Oh, who wants to look at that? Do you know that's part of the problem in the world that we live, especially in the church? Is we don't want to look at that ugliness of who I really, what I've allowed to enter into my heart. And it takes God's grace and his light, his loving kindness to, to go there to realize that, yeah, even though I'm that bad of a sucker, he still forgives me because that's the truth. And I can get free of it today. I don't have to be bitter about that husband who ignores me or has gone off in another planet or a wife that or a brother, or a sister. This is where the great physician comes in, into our heart, and he starts to redecorate the heart. And then people want to know what's going on with you. You live in a ghetto, but you're happy. You don't have a lot of money in the bank, but you're happy. You have peace in your life. And what's the difference? You replaced anger and unbelief with a Savior who's full of faith and goodness and love and loving kind. Now here come the fruits. And he says you'll know them by their fruits. When we're dealing with people in their tongues, you'll know them by, it's not what they actually say all the time, it's what they do. do you, are they kind to you? Are they thinking about you or others? Or is it all about them? Are they so self-centered that you don't exist in their life? You'll know them by their fruits. And what are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness. Or are they judgmental and angry and gossip? And every time you're with them, it's, it's gossip about somebody. Why is that? And yes, there's a time and a place for us to, re to recognize a situation, to deal with a situation, but it's sowed in love. So let's pray today. Lord, we ask for the grace to look within our hearts. And if you're watching us, by video or you've never have come to the place in your life to realize you even can look inside or have a heart or know that Jesus Christ is alive and real and you can invite him in to forgive you your sins. Take a moment today. The God that created you. His word created the universe. His word created you. He's the word made flesh. And because words have offended and have broken his law, he spun the cross of man's words and God's words and paid the price for it. And you can receive forgiveness from him. You can allow and enter, ask him to enter into your garden, into that room of your heart and redecorate. That no matter what's happening, no matter how cold it's outside, no matter what's going on, you're going to have a positive attitude. Why? Because you have him, the King of Kings. So Lord, we ask you today for the grace to sit before you by ourselves in our prayer closet and allow you to redecorate our lives, our hearts. That we might be the witnesses that what comes out of our mouth not just what comes out of our mouth, but what comes out of our actions reflect you. With the hope 
of knowing the best is yet to come. The yes, you're coming to us to save us. You're going to lead us and guide us as you spoke to us, as you spoke to this ministry through all that we're going through. For we ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Don't be speaking better.